Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be comparing my $600 Epiphone to the $6,000 Gibson Les Paul Custom. So hey guys, my name is Cole Townsend, and as I just said, I'm going to be comparing these two guitars. These two guitars, well, they're, they're in tight contention for my, uh, my number one spot as my favorite guitars that I own. And that's honestly for great reason. Both these guitars are amazing guitars, but they're very different. So, let me get to the comparison here. Let's start by saying that, is this a fair comparison? No, not at all. With one of the guitars, this one costing about 10 times more than this one, obviously it's not going to be a fair fight. They're just in completely different levels, but I'm going to be comparing them. That way maybe you guys can decide if the price difference is worth it for you. But both these guitars are very heavy, so I'm going to put down, a, I'm going to put down this one because it's heavier. I'm just going to hold this one for the video. So if you guys aren't new to this channel, chances are you've probably seen both of these guitars. They're, they've been on my channel a lot, but if you guys haven't, let me introduce them to you guys real quick. This one is my 2014 Epiphone Les Paul Traditional Pro. This thing is my original number one. This thing is my baby. I love this thing very much. I've already told the story about this guitar a bunch, a bunch of different times, so I already have a couple videos on that. So I'm not going to tell you too much more than that into its backstory. This right here is my dream guitar. This is my 1979 Gibson Les Paul Custom, and that's tobacco burst finished. I worked all summer long, that way I was able to afford this thing, and um, I don't regret it in the slightest. I love this thing very, very much. And for the amount of money I spent on it, I better be happy about it. <laughs> if you guys don't care about me talking about the guitars, the playing demo starts at that time. So, if you just want to skip ahead of the playing, skip to that time there. But if you guys want to hear me talk about it and ramble about them a little bit, then stay long. I have a big list at my feet about the differences of these guitars, and they're all written down. So if I'm looking down, that's why. The first difference we have is that this one has nicer binding than this one. It's probably easier if I just got up and showed you. But as you can see here, the binding is much thicker on this one, much higher quality. It's just, it's very nice. Um, it's aged, obviously, it's a little bit older. Um, but if you go to this one over here, you can't really even see it from the front angle here. Um, it's still visible, and it's still nice to have, it still looks good. But it's definitely, it doesn't even hold a candle to the, uh, to the Gibson over there. Next thing we have here is the headstock shape. As you can clearly tell, this one has a much different shape, it's much larger. Uh, that also just has to do with it being a 70s model. 70s had bigger headstocks than, the, than more modern day guitars. But Epiphones, they have a much different headstock shape. Personally, I like the Gibson a lot more. It's not better or worse than the Epiphones, it's just different. But personally, I think the, uh, the Gibson headstock is just shaped a little bit nicer. It looks a little more professional in my opinion. And to wrap up the cosmetic differences, let's look at the backs. This one, it's not bad. It's just a, a regular plain old satin black back. It's it's nothing special, it doesn't really stand out at all. Um, kind of boring. But if you look at this one, just wait till you guys see this. Look at this. That is gorgeous. It's got a nice figured piece of mahogany in the back. It's, uh, it has the burst around it. Even the neck is done up. Nice. But look at this thing. This one has a much more interesting back. And uh, most Les Paul Customs have the back done in at least some kind of different color. Not all of them, of course, but so you can clearly tell, this thing is something special to it. Now we're going to be talking about some of the more noticeable differences, something that has to do with like the playability itself. And the first thing I'm going to have to start off with is the pickups in each of these guitars. I'm not exactly sure what Epiphone pickups come in, uh, in this one here, but they actually sound pretty dang good, especially for an Epiphone. But they don't really hold a candle to the, the Gibson T-Top pickups here. Of course, you'll be able to hear the sound difference whenever I plug it into the amp and give you guys a sound demo, which I'm finally doing. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me to actually play on this channel, which I don't really do, so if it sucks, I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyways, they just have different pickups. In my opinion, these ones are much nicer. They're also a lot more expensive, which you can't really buy them new anymore, so if you're going to buy them, you're going to have to play a hefty penny for the, um, the vintage prices. Also, by the way, if any of you guys know why Gibson stopped making T-Top pickups, let me know, because I freaking love them. and. Hey, guy. If they made them again, I would buy a new set. I'd probably put, end up putting them in this one. The next playability difference has to do with the fret nibs. If you don't know what fret nibs are, they are how, as you can see here, the binding on the neck goes over the fret or side of the fret wire itself, making it much smoother. Obviously, there's no fret sprouting because, well, you can't feel the side of the frets. But if I compare it to uh, Lust, the Epiphone over here, you can see that you're able to see and feel the side of the frets. I'm sorry, that's not really in focus right now. But yes, here you go, you can see the side of the frets, while on this one, the binding covers it. And that's just a Gibson thing, that's pretty much on all Gibsons, while I don't think there's any Epiphones that have that feature. It just makes the guitar feel much more premium, much more finished. 
There are some downsides of that though, that is that if you want to refret it, it's much, much more difficult for a luthier to be able to uh, get the frets out and replace them with new ones without messing up the old fret nibs. And a lot of the time you'll find a lot of older vintage Les Pauls that have missing uh, fret nibs that just chipped off and broken just because they're a little bit more fragile. They're not, they're just, they're just a thin piece of plastic. But if you have all of them like this one does, you're gonna appreciate it because it feels great. The next difference is just the, the quality of the hardware itself. If I were to take both of the uh, the bridge and tail pieces off, you can just feel that this one, they're a lot heavier. You can just tell they're built better. Uh, they're also made in the United States in, uh, with these ones here, while these ones, I believe they're made in Korea. Not 100% sure. Epiphone kind of changes wherever they're making guitars all the time, so you never really know. But that also has to do with the tuners here. If you look at them, you can just tell. These ones aren't bad at all. They're nice Grover tuners, but they're also not the same as these ones. Uh, these ones are just a little bit better. But then again, those are replaceable parts. If you guys wanted to buy an Epiphone and upgrade it and have much nicer tuners, nicer bridge, nicer tailpiece, stuff like that, it'll make the guitar a lot better. But does it still hold the candle to the overall nicer guitar? Another thing that makes this one a little bit more premium is that it has a metal output jack plate. Now, yeah, they may not seem like a huge deal, but you'd be surprised. These plastic ones, especially if you play live a lot, they can break pretty easily. If a cable gets ripped out or something like that happens, don't be surprised if that, uh, that plate there chips, but if you have a metal one, that pretty much negates the chances of that ever happening. The next thing is the pots. The difference between these two pots, these ones are much nicer. With the Epiphone, they kind of have, they don't really have much of a slow gradual difference. It's usually like, if it's on zero, obviously it's off, but if you slowly turn it up, it's just, it's just such a sharp turn to, to max volume. Well, on this one, it's much nicer. If you put it on five, it's gonna sound like five, not like, not like it's on two or, or on nine or eight. So on this one, you can clearly tell if you turn the knobs, it's a much more gradual difference between zero and 10. Well, on this one, like I said, it's much more like zero, maybe one, then it jumps to nine and then 10. No, yeah, that is also replaceable, but you shouldn't really have to worry about replacing all the parts in your guitar. Another difference is the neck shape. Neck shape, of course, is, uh, it's very subjective, but you can tell this one is much thinner than this one. This one has a much more round shape to it. Well, this one kind of has sharper shoulders with a little bit more of a flat back. It kind of reminds me of an Ibanez neck in a little, uh, in a little bit. This one kind of reminds me of kind of like a PRS neck, maybe. Um, I don't think it's as thick. It's just, it's just different. They're both great necks. It's just personal preference, whatever, uh, whatever, which one you like more. And now that we're talking about the necks here, let's talk about the volute on the back of this one. This is, uh, the volute started in about the, the late 60s and stopped in the early 80s, um, unfortunately. This one is not one of those models, so it does not have the volute. I love the volute. I think it's a really nice, neat to feature. It protects the guitar neck. It also looks pretty cool. So, this one has a volute. This one does not. The last playability difference we have is the 70s flat frets. Every time I talk about this guitar, I usually bring up the flat frets it has. They're just flat and wide frets. That's just what Gibson used in the 70s. It feels a lot different than a more modern day guitar. You may like it, you may hate it. I personally like it. That doesn't mean I necessarily like it more than a more modern fret. It's just different and it definitely takes a lot of getting used to. Now finally, something that this guitar has over this one is the fact that this one has push pull pots. Do I really use them? No, but it's still a really neat feature to have in case I ever do want to use it. So just having the availability of kind of turning these humbuckers into single coils makes it a little bit more well-rounded in that sense. Again, do I ever use it? No, but it's nice to have. And of course, you could just look at them. You could tell that they're very different guitars, and that's because they're not really trying to be the same thing. This is a Les Paul Custom. This is a Les Paul Traditional. They're just different. And again, they're not trying to be the same guitar. That's why I haven't really talked about a lot of the other differences they have. But now that I'm here, I might as well discuss them. The first difference we have is I believe this Les Paul has five ply binding, not only on the front, but also on the back. While this one doesn't have any binding on the back at all. Something you'll notice is that most of the difference between a Les Paul Custom and a Les Paul Traditional, which is basically a standard, is that they're mostly cosmetic differences. This binding on the back doesn't do anything. I personally like it though. I feel like it makes the guitar look a little more professional. Another thing that the Les Paul Custom has is binding on the headstock itself. This one, however, does not. Another difference, now that we're talking about the headstock, is the Les Paul Custom Inlay emblem thing here. That's called the Split Diamond Custom Inlay. And of course, a standard or traditional will just have the Les Paul model silk screen right there on the front of the headstock. Les Paul Customs also have gold hardware, while these ones have silver. Silver coloring and gold coloring, of course. They're not actual gold or silver. But yeah, you can see here, it's got the gold on the, um, the bridge and tail piece here, same thing with this one over here with the silver, and then the tuners, gold, tuners, silver. Les Paul Customs will have block inlays, they'll also have an inlay on the first fret here, 
while however on this one it allowed trapezoid inlays and no first fret inlay. That's also just another obvious cosmetic difference, it makes no difference in playability, it just looks different. Something I already mentioned, but that is that the back is bursted, this one is not, also the neck is bursted, as well as the sides also have a little burst there, as you can see, the sides of the headstock have a burst. This one is, uh, they took a lot more time to, uh, to make it look a little bit nicer in the terms of, of just paint and stuff like that and stain. This one is just the front and the rest of the body is black. The final difference we have is that the Les Paul Custom will have an ebony neck, while this one will have a rich light. If you don't know what rich light is, it's basically a fake wood. I don't know what it is made out of, but it, I mean, it feels wood. It feels like wood. I mean, it's not, a lot of people have a problem with it. I personally don't. I think it's fine. I have no issues with it. It feels real enough to me, but the uh, there's nothing nothing better than some uh, some vintage mahogany. Sorry, not mahogany. Some vintage ebony here. I've been talking for a while, guys. Give me a break. <laughs> You can just tell the wood grain in this ebony here is it's very close together. It feels very, very smooth. This fretboard here also feels very smooth, saying as it doesn't really have any real wood grain. That's because it's not wood, but it also feels very smooth. It feels very nice. It's just it's not real wood, so that kind of uh, it kind of diminishes the value of it, of course. And now that we're finally done talking about these guitars, let's get on to their main feature, their sound. Hey guys, uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's been about a month in between this clip and the last clip you just saw. And I, I just really want to apologize for how long it's been since I've uploaded a video. A lot's just gone on, and uh, I'll talk about it in the end of the video. So I'm going to do the sound demo, and just want to apologize for now. So for the sound demo, I'm going to be playing something a little bit like Paradise City, just because I feel like it kind of covers a lot of the realms of the just the tonal options you can have. So I'm not going to play it perfectly, just because I really don't want to get copyrighted, or I at least want to lower the, the chances of that happening. So uh, here we go. <laughs>
and so that is basically the video. Is the price difference worth it for you? I don't know. Again, it's obviously up to you. But for me personally, I like this one better. I think it plays better. I really like the extra features it has, and in my opinion, I think it sounds a little better. This one just sounds different, though. I think it's a little bit brighter. It's just different. So please let me know in the comments down below which one you guys think is better for you. But anyways, that's about it for this video. I'm going to stick around and talk for a little bit, explain why I haven't uploaded it in a little bit. So if you guys care about that, stick around, but if not, the video's over, so I don't really care if you're staying or not. So anyways, if you guys like this video, feel free to click like, and if you loved it and you want to see more content from me, feel free to subscribe. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. And now for something a little more serious. <laughs> so like I mentioned earlier in the video, right before the sound demo, I haven't uploaded in about a month. It's, it's been way, way longer than I ever wanted to go without uploading. And honestly, just the reason for this happening is I've had quite a lot go on in the last couple months. I went through a breakup. Uh, wrestling season started for the school, so that's really stressful. School got really stressful. I had to take my uh, my SAT, so I had to study a lot for that. Basically, just a whole bunch of ex uh, of excuses uh, of why I haven't really been uploading. YouTube just kind of, in, in my priorities in life, just kind of fell down a little bit. So obviously, it's still a huge priority in my life. I love doing YouTube, so I'm going to keep doing it continuously. But I'm just going to be honest, guys. The, the videos are probably going to slow down a little bit. I'm still going to aim to make a video a week, but if I miss it, chances are I had a wrestling tournament or something of that sort, so something like that. Well, on the good note of a, of a breakup, I gained about seven pounds in muscle, which is uh, pretty awesome. <laughs> so, but anyways, thank you guys. Uh, that's just about it. Um, I'm going to continue doing this. Thank you guys so much for the support, and uh, the channel still did well over the, uh, the month of me not uploading. I still continue to gain a couple subscribers, some more views and stuff like that, so it hasn't really affected me too negatively, which is great, but I'm still... No, I'm never going to do this again. I'm going to do my best to make sure I stay consistent with my uploads and uh, stay loyal to you guys. So thank you guys so much for watching. That's just about it. Thank you guys.